Hey, Mayor with Lisa. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry we were a little bit late. We had some technical difficulties. Um, I'm very excited for today's show. As you can see, it's a Halloween theme show. Um, I have psychic Frank Andrews here. Frank is one of New York's top psychics. Frank has read for Yoko Ono, John Lennon, Princess Grace, and Perry Ellis. Um, so we're going to talk to Frank a little bit about him, and then we're going to find out what Halloween really is all about because it's pretty interesting, and I promise I won't fly away on my broom. <laughs> so, Frank, thank you so much for coming and joining me on such short notice because oh, I know no. I just called you the other day. Well, that's okay. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I, I love talking especially about Halloween because most people don't even know the meaning of Halloween. It actually means holy night, uh, or you might say all hallows even, and actually... This is something that just got lost in time. They would count in ancient times 40 days starting on the fall equinox. Okay. And they believe that a spirit took 40 days to develop. Now they do know that there's something special about the number 40. It appears in the Old Testament something like 60, I forget, 64 or 65 times. You know, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, and the New Testament, Jesus wandered uh, into the desert for 40 days, and Moses took 40 years through the, you know, to find the promised land, which he never found. So anyway, so that number 40 means something. So on the 40th day, if you start with the fall equinox, which is usually on September 21st, count 40 days, it's October 31st. Right. Or holy evening, Halloween. But the earth has shifted. So now Halloween is really uh, going to be on November 1st because the fall equinox is on the 22nd this year of uh, September. You see right. what I'm saying? Yes. So people don't know that. So they think they now. that now the church <laughs> tried to eliminate Halloween. You can't. People love Halloween. It's a great and, holiday. Well, it's exciting and it has many meanings. And so if we count the 40 days, so All Saints Day was created followed by All Souls Day on November 2nd, in case it should fall on November 2nd. Why people get dressed up and why people wear a mask? Yeah, we have the mask. And okay, and, I, and, and, and the broom will explain what all that means. What happened was, so it, let's say, okay, Grandma is coming back from the dead, okay, during that 40-day period. Now, I, I don't want to see her. I don't like her. She was ma mean to me. So I'm going to get dressed up and wear a mask. So when she comes to my door and looks in the window, she doesn't see me. She sees somebody else. So people began dressing up in costumes to hide from the spirit world, actually. And, of course, you know, with, with time and religion and, and Walt Disney, everything became a whole other story. You know, it became, uh, witches became very negative, you know. And really, basically, witches were old ladies probably in the, de in the forest who uh, worked with herbs. And let's say, for example, you're very pale. And if you went to uh, a, a witch in the, in, in the uh, forest, she'd say, hmm. And she would make you a brew, probably mostly a parsley. And when you drank it, your cheeks got pink. And that was because of iron, you see. And so, you know, these ladies, uh, they were not part of the AMA, you know, the American Medical Association, so they had to be wiped out. So witches took on a bad name. What you're holding is the magic wand. The broom, what exactly, be yeah, what because is witches were always, um, uh, by the way, the word uh, witch comes from the tree, the willow. Uh, the willow tree was always associated with uh, witchcraft. And uh, the broom, what you have here, is the, actually the magic, can I have that for a second? Yes. All right, this is the magic wand, actually, and this is made from mountain ash here, the, uh, this trunk here. And the twigs are from uh, the birch tree, and this would be uh, part of the willow that's tied around. And so they use this in order to hide uh, their wand, their magic, because they, if they got caught with a magic wand, they would be uh, executed. They would be burned at the stake. So this is one way of hiding it. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how many of them really flew on it. I doubt very much if many of them did. But this is really what it's all about. And of course, on Halloween, if you really want to get rid of all your problems, a new broom sweeps clean. So we'd use a broom to sweep all along the doorways and get rid of all your old problems because 
a new year is about to begin. And that's really what the meaning of. So the myth of like when you buy a new house and you get a new broom, that would. No, that it's part of it. Come? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you would definitely. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people like to put salt all around the windows uh, to keep away the evil spirits. Uh, what we have here is ivy. Ivy, in, you know, again, going back to ancient times, it was more like 13 months, not 12. And each month was uh, represented by a tree or a bush, a, a plant of some sort. And this is the time for ivy. And the Christian church would not allow ivy uh, or um, holly in the church because it was always associated with uh, paganism and uh, in those days they had what they called the uh, the uh, holly boys and the girls were called uh, ivy girls and they would sing songs and they would compete like you have on television uh, the, where you, you see these two groups of kids they're singing their song and dancing and then the other side they had the same thing uh, back then it was so it was the holly boys and the ivy girls and it was like a, a competition uh, between the two so this is the time when ivy was decorated you know in the home and uh, they the yule tide they would cut a tree down and carry it from village to village and sing outside and uh, uh, people would let them come in the home and they would bring it in later you know it as a Christmas tree, which became very famous. The Christmas, by the way, that we celebrate today is because of Charles Dickens. He created that whole thing about Christmas, and uh, it was uh, actually it was also going to be outlawed because uh, in England people would get drunk and uh, rape and and all kinds of crime, and they really were going to do away with Christmas. But then it all changed. Uh, what you have here, oh, the, this is a typical mask. Now, from this mask Venice. you got in Venice, correct? Yeah, that, I brought that back from Venice. And that would have been something that they would wear, again, to uh, hide from any spirit. No, but why would you think, I mean, so you're saying they would hide from any spirits, good, bad? Well, I mean. Because you would think when, you, when someone passes, you don't want to hide from someone you love or. Right, but let's say you there was somebody you didn't want to see. Let's look at it that way. So that's why they would dress up. And, but with that being said, how is that possible if in the spirit world you pass and you know you can see everything? How is it that spirit well, doesn't recognize wait a minute, that, that, That's a theory. We don't know for sure. Okay. You know, and I mean, if you really want to see somebody that died that you love, uh, I suggest that you take a photograph of your person that you cared about so much and you put it in a silver frame, this is the time you have to do it, and put it by the window so that the moonlight hits it, and that spirit would help find its way home. The pumpkin, by the way, symbolizes the sun. Now, the pumpkin is really America. In, in Europe, uh, they would use a turnip, or they would use a potato, and they would put a candle there, which is very similar. But, but if you light a pumpkin, then the spirit, you're lighting the way, put it in a window, they find their way to your home. That's that's what that is. That's interesting. That I didn't from. know half of the stuff that you're talking about. So Mo it's most totally people don't. Yeah, totally no. they, they think it's a time for, uh, you know, uh, getting nasty or having parties and, you know. Eating it's all, it's all, a lot of it's just <laughs> lost, you know. And, uh, and the, the, the um, this which this uh, you have here, this is a spirit trumpet. Uh, what was done back in the 1800s, these were very popular, it's very lightweight. This would be placed on a table, and if there was a spirit in the room, this thing starts to move around, and uh, you hear voices like, Somebody, oh. So what happens if we hear put it somewhere? What, do you think it would move? Do you feel any kind of energy in Yeah, there would be an energy. Uh, yeah. You know, I... When I first got involved in all of this, you know, I met so many people, and I began to think, you know, come on, Frankie, is this real? And until it happened to me, then I started realizing, wait a minute, there is something here. Now, how did you get, how did you become a psychic? How did you know you had this well, gift? Well, okay, let's start when I was about maybe nine, ten years old, all right? Back. There you go. When I was about nine or ten, if that falls over, somebody's here. <laughs> so, so uh, when um, uh, <laughs> hello, <laughs> when I was about eight or ten, nine, something like that, and I don't remember exactly the date. I 
woke up in my bedroom and the room was hot. And that's very unusual. Whenever there's a ghost, it's always cold. You can actually see your breath. But this time, it was really boiling hot. And there at the foot of the bed was this woman. And I, I knew who it was. And as far as I knew, she was very much alive. And I looked at her, and she wasn't full figure. It was about maybe two-thirds of what she normally would have been. And she, I, 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 she never um, uh, smoked a cigarette. I, I, I'm sure she was a virgin. I, she <laughs> never had a date. Anyway, she was a part of the family. She was uh, my aunt's sister-in-law. So anyway, I looked at her, and, and I said, you look so beautiful. And she did. She was glowing, and her dress was like all sparkles. And I said, why are you here? And she said, I came to say goodbye. And with that, boom, just like Disney movie, thousand stars, and she disappeared. In the morning, I'm having breakfast, and I was in the kitchen. I have two sisters, and we're all having breakfast, and the phone rang. My mother went into the other room, and in those days, uh, it wasn't like now. Uh, we even had a party line, so when you picked up the phone, somebody would be talking. They would like we had to share the phone with three other families. And my mother came in the room, and she looked at me, and she said, "Guess who died last night?" And I said, "Grace." And she goes, "How do you know?" I said, "I saw her. She was in my bedroom." And my mother was very smart, and she said, "Look, don't tell everybody. You saw a ghost. They'll think you're crazy." And that was the beginning. And, how old and so were you? they were about somewhere anywhere between eight to ten, somewhere in that range. I, I know I, I'm not really sure. I was I know I was a little kid, you know. And that was that was the first thing, and I didn't really pay much attention to it. And then uh, I came to New York. I, I had to get out of Buffalo. It was, Buffalo had nothing for me, and I packed my bag when I was eighteen and uh, came to New York. And of all the people that I meet in this town was an old lady by the name of Marion Tanner. Marion Tanner, uh, there was a book written about her, and it was called Annie Main. There was a Broadway play about her, and it was called Annie Main. There was a movie starring Rosalind Russell, Annie Main. And then later there was a musical called uh, Main. Uh, and then there was a, a, a terrible, terrible movie with Lucille Ball playing the role, and it was a movie musical. Anyway, this was the real person. And she had a house on Bank Street, 72 Bank Street. And uh, I met her, and I lived around the corner on Perry Street, and she had incredible people. I mean, talk about the eccentrics of the world. I mean, they were there. If you go to the village, it's all homogenized. It's all suit and tie. They're all yuppies, all the, the drag queens, all the funny people, gone, gone. And uh, so, but Marion had this host of amazing people, painters, writers, poets. Uh, Will Beer used to stay there. And she took, the, she took the lock off the front door, and anybody could stay there. And she had a little sign by the bell, and it said, a home for wayward uncles and aunts. And she looked at me, and she said, you're very psychic. And I said, I had no idea what that word was. And one day, we were having breakfast in the kitchen, and and I looked at her and I said, you know, one of your, quote, tenants, they never paid her any money. I said, uh, he's going to be in big trouble. I feel the police. And with that, the phone rang, and it was somebody saying they just arrested, his name was Dick, and they just arrested him because he tried to blow up the telephone company. And she looked at me and she said, Franco, what big eyes you have. And so she began to introduce me to all this wonderful world of eccentric people who were involved. And through her, I met these three wonderful ladies from England, actually. And it was the British who really were more into this. And in, in those days, uh, it wasn't like now. I mean, television, you had the medium, you had the ghost whisper. No, 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 no. It was very hush, hush, hush. Nobody uh, knew who was uh, doing, re there were no storefronts like you see now. Those gypsy storefronts really are kind of a come on. I mean, they, you walk in there and, oh, you, you have a, 
curse on you and that's why you're not married and they'll scare you and I mean uh, speaking of curses and black magic and candle magic I mean do you believe in that stuff because I know a lot of people who swear by it like they'll, <laughs> they'll pay a lot of money and uh, yeah I know I uh, listen I got a phone call once from a very prominent lawyer and I mean prominent number one one of the uh, uh, companies in, in New York and he was freaking out because a devil was chasing him and I said come on and he said, yes, the, 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 the gypsy told me that I have a curse on me. And I said, how much money did she ask for? And she said, $10,000. And I said, you know what? I'll give me five. I'll take the curse off. And I started laughing. And he said, I'm serious. I said, so am I. I said, forget it. You, so you don't believe in that stuff? I'm not going to say that. But certainly I know it wasn't on him. Most people, my mother used to say, never curse anyone. They curse themselves. Most of us are lazy and we... You know, people say, well, uh, in your reading, you, you see a job coming. Well, sometimes, hey, you got to go out and get it. And other times, somebody will get a phone call out of nowhere. I mean, you can't just sit back and do nothing. Right, just like you can't tell me the lottery numbers. No, that, that that's the only... You know, Hollywood... I mean, I haven't met a psychic who walks on water. I, I, I hope I do, but I haven't met one. So, come on. And, 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 and are we right all the time? No. Is your doctor right all the time? No. Is your lawyer right all the time? No. Come on. So people um, uh, think that everything is going to be the gospel, and it doesn't work that way. I wish it did. I wish it did. When you give a reading, I mean, you do a lot of, you don't hear things. You primarily do I work. I like cards. to work with tarot cards, and I like to work with palmistry, and I do a little astrology, and I do a little bit of numbers, you know, numerology. But... You know, I try to put it all together and try to get a complete picture. And it's not easy. And then sometimes things do happen. I, I was explaining earlier, all right, there's there's three ways it works. A woman comes in, she sits down, and I don't know. I looked at her and I said, Sardinia. And at that time, I hadn't even a clue where Sardinia was. But I actually could see the words spelled out. And I said... So are you going to Sardinia? And she said, oh, my God, I am. And she got up and ran over, got her purse open, showed me the ticket. Now, that was from the conscious mind. She knew she was going to Sardinia. Now, watch this. Another lady comes, and I said to her, you know, I've never done tea leaf reading. That's just what I hope it. Let's have fun. I want to make everything very fun and natural. I don't want to be like, <gasps> you know, candles and black drapes and all that. So, anyway, we do the tea leaf, and I'm looking in it. I said, Wow. I said, that looks like Greenland. She said, Greenland? I said, I think you're going to go to Greenland. And she starts laughing. She said, keep looking. Maybe you can find the Eiffel Tower or the Colosseum. I'd rather go to Rome or I'd rather go to Paris. The phone rang. I said, oh, it's my boyfriend. I said, oh, go ahead. She picked up screams. He got an assignment in Greenland. Now, that was the woman for Sardinia was those here, the conscious mind. Greenland is back here. That's the unconscious mind, because she was not aware of it. Then, as I start talking about Greenland, it goes down, down, down into a lower depth. And that's the hard part. And that's what separates the men from the boys. Now, what do you mean? So when you're doing a reading, you're, you're going by your gut and your feelings. And, you have to, yes. And what happens if you're, I know no one's 100%. Um, and I know free will comes into a lot of things. And I've had a lot of mediums say, you know what? You're going to have this job. You're going to be with this guy. You're going to have this many kids. You're, you're going to, you know, travel well, the world. Well, and then certain things don't happen. Well, I can't speak for them. I don't know right. who they are. All right. So, but I, the only way I can say about myself, they come back. And they all come back. And if they come back, some of them won't come back because they're frightened. Right. And they, they get they get scared. But how much is free? Of, on the things that you talk about, if something's destined to be, if something's in your blueprint. It's a, it's a combination of both. How much is free? No, will there are times I, you, I, you hear me say, look, I hate your job. Quit your goddamn job and go out and this is what you should do. And, and you know, was that, I'm actually sort of trying to guide them in a different direction. Sometimes you have to. I mean, we're weak. We're, we're not... So most of us are not very smart. I'm sorry, you know. Right. And uh, and a lot of them, a lot of them, I say thank to, especially women. They they took such a backseat for so long. I say thank God you got a rich husband, and then because you're never going to be able to find a job because they they let themselves go. 
So I'm trying to find it. Sometimes there's nothing to tell them. Uh, usually, in the old days, I was, here's the number of a therapist, go to him. And I don't do that anymore. So I got a <laughs> migraine headache, go away. I'm sorry, I can't read for you. It's the easiest way to end it. Because, I, you know, I can't walk on I can't make things happen. Right, no, I know. And sometimes it you, does happen, though. No, sometimes yeah. out of nowhere, they get that phone call. It does happen. And then other times they got to make the phone call. You know, I mean, it's like somebody said uh, to me once, he said um, in an interview, they said, well, uh, what about you have to ask a question? And I said, well, I don't ask a question, but I want to know if I'm hitting on an area and if I'm right. And he says, well, why would you want to know that? I said, because go to your doctor, wrap yourself up in a ball and say, okay, doc, find the pain. So if I hit the subject matter and <coughs> say, you're here because you're worried about should you sell your home? And you say, yeah, that's what I want to know. Then, ah, then the door opens up. But if you sit there and say nothing, maybe then I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Now, you read, you have read for a lot of famous people. You read for John Lennon. You read for Yoko Ono. You read for Princess Grace, <coughs> right. Perry Ellis. Now, you, you told Perry Ellis not to get on a plane. Yeah, well, he told everybody that story. What happened Pretty was, I didn't, know who, I didn't know who he was. He wasn't the famous Perry Ellis when I met him. And he called me up, and he actually said on the phone, he says, you know, I don't believe in this kind of thing, but all my friends say, you're funny and you're charming. I should go. I said, well, okay. So he comes over, sits down, and during the reading, I said, you know, do you fly to Fire Island or the Hamptons? And he is, every weekend I go to a place, uh, it's called Water Island. I said, I, I never heard of Water Island. And he said, well, it's part, thank God he said this, part of Fire Island. And I said, well, I said, go to Rome, go to Paris, go to London, go to Miami, I don't care. But don't get in that plane to Fire Island. And I said, if you want to throw a party for me, I won't get on that plane with you. He said, oh, you're serious? I said, yeah, I'm serious. And he said, well, now what do I got to do? I said, what, what do you want from me? So he said, now I got to take a train. I got to get on a ferry boat, and then I have to take a water taxi. Ah, do what you want to do. So he called me on a Saturday morning, and he said these words. I'll never forget it. And I said, he said, you know, he said, did you hear the plane crash last night? It was on a Friday night. And it never happened again. One time, only one time, that it crashed. And the pilot and the two passengers died. And one of the passengers, by the way, was a very famous guru. And he told his following that he was not going to live long. I think his name was Rudy. I met him once, very heavy set guy, sitting with his legs crossed, and he was selling Buddhas and all kinds of, you know, Lord Ganesh and what have you. And anyway, and he told them, and he was on that plane. Anyway, so uh, I had said to him that if you give me five years, I bet you'll be a very famous individual. And uh, and sure enough, five years later, it, he, it's in his biography. Yeah. He told everybody every that that was the funniest summer because everybody who walked through the door was always hoped well dressed, and I'd look and I'd say, oh, "You must be in fashion," because they all right. read, they all heard about it. And um, anyway, so that yes, but now Princess Grace, on the other hand, she. Um, uh, didn't listen at all. I wanted her to pack her bag and leave her husband. She said, I can't get a divorce. I said, well, I said, then, then I said, then just, just go to California and, and start working. And she said, do you think I can get a job? I said, are you kidding? I said, the scripts will be from the floor to here. I said, you're going to hire, you're going to hire three people just to read through scripts. I said, but I don't want that. I said, if you get a job in a movie, listen to these words, I'll never forget it. I said, you will either be laughed at because you are rich, you're beautiful, you won an Academy Award, and now you're a princess and you're coming back to Hollywood? No, 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 no. You're not going to take a movie. Now, listen to these words. You're going to do something with children and theater. And she said, oh, you mean Peter Pan. I said, no, 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 no. Something with children and theater. And I said, and you're reading from a book. Never heard any more. The rest was history. She's walking out the door and she looks at me and she says, Will I die in a car? And I said, what makes you think you're going to die in a car? And she said, because I've had a premonition ever since I was a little girl. And her cousin who sent me to uh, her said, did she ask you about dying in a car? 
I said, yeah, and she asked me about that. She said she always does. She goes to all the psychics everywhere, Paris, everywhere. And she asked them if she's going to die in a car. Anyway, so that was it. That was the last. And then a man comes, and he sits in the chair, and he looks at me, and he has this very heavy Russian accent, and he goes, because of you, I was nominated for Academy Award. I said, because of me? I said, I don't even know who you are. And he said, I wrote a letter to Princess Grace, and I want to make a documentary, Children of Theater Street. And I go, what's Theater Street? And he says, that's where all the ballet schools are in Russia. She was reading from a book. She was a narrator. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. See, all she had to do was pack her bag and move uh, to L.A. She'd probably still be alive. You but, think? Well, not. Oh, Even yeah, then. she would have been alive. But it was almost like she predicted, you know, Andy Warhol said to me, next time he goes in the hospital, he's not coming out. He didn't have a reading. He never wanted a reading for No, me. he was too scared. He, was too, he did my portrait. I, portrait. I have that. I, yeah, he did my portrait. I'm in four museums around America, the Polaroids he took of me. I should have asked him for one, because I heard they were worth 30000 a piece. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, going back to palmistry, now you're, you're starting to teach palmistry. And what made you get more into that as kind well, of away from reading? All right, palmistry gives you an overall picture. The cards are really about what's happening today, kind of, I think. It's more like what's going on right now. But I'm, I am teaching a few people because, you know, I'm, I'm getting older and uh, I'm trying to retire, but I can't. The, the phone just keeps ringing. So I've only seen one or two people, maybe, if I see that. And uh, I'm, I'm getting tired. You know, it's so I'm passing it on to other people. I don't charge for teaching, actually. It's a, it's a free service I do. So, and, uh, on palmistry stuff, though, what makes it so different? Like, if you were to read something, well, it's the overall character. I mean, you know, like looking at your hand to sit at a like, glance. Can you see, like, what's going to happen? Here, and it's hard to see from here to Joe there. Here, but I one, all right. But I'm I, Okay, Girl, wonderful. This way. All right, let's take a look. All right, let's first start with the me? back of the hand. Okay, I'm not going to explain how I do it, okay, because that's my little secret. Okay. And you're not my student. All right, but the first thing I'm going to look at is you, you have to be careful about your breathing. You're going to have sinus problems, okay? That means no milk, no cheese. All right, that's what happens. All right? okay. So sinus is going to be the problem. Okay, I don't like the fact that you're probably a vegetarian. All right. You should eat red meat. If you're not going to eat red meat, then you have to go to a nutritionist and find what supplements can you take because you're going to need something. Otherwise, Frankie, I'm so tired. And you probably also have a touch we call low blood sugar. So this is your killer hour coming up like around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. You may find yourself getting tired. See, because you're not eating that much red meat, you say. Also, you have to do more Pilates because of stretches. Yeah, you got to do it. Yeah, I mean that. This is. I'm just doing a quick overall. Now, do you see yeah. stuff with career? Do you see? Wait, stuff wait with a career? minute, oh, Jesus, you know. Oh God. It's <laughs> so, all right. So now you're right-handed, right? Left-handed. Oh, good thing I asked. Whoa. Okay. No, because it makes quite a difference. Okay. Why yeah, is that? Sure that? Well, all right. Well. Okay. This. Okay. All right. That is your. This is your your right hand. Okay. Right. This is very. All right, this is neurotic. Okay, this is kind of crazy. Just this a is, little. Uh, this is what you were born with. Okay, this is what you were born with. This is better. Okay. This is improved. Okay. So, see. in other words, you've come a long way, baby, as they yes, say. I all have. right? Yeah, so no, but you probably were a lot crazier. Uh, uh, I met you years ago, right? Three years ago. Three years ago. I didn't send you to a therapist? No. Oh, wow. I guess you, <laughs> and you must. I must have felt you were improving that. All right. Okay, so now this is what you're doing, okay? And the lines are good. This is long life line, uh, long health line, uh, great. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to know about the career, right? Yeah. And other things. All right. Sure. Okay, okay, all right. We'll try. All right. So let's say we're approaching you you wanna say your age? I mean you No. Age. All right. So uh, all right, so twenty nine. Well, uh, yeah, all right. Oh no, I thought you were twenty five. Okay, <laughs> Leave it at that. Okay. I'll just put it this way. I I think I know how old you are. 
All right, so you're approaching like a new beginning. Yes, I agree. Okay, right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does it go well? Mm, it's hard, very hard. And you have to boom, 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 really be on your toes right now. But it's happening right now. And uh, it is expanding. Uh, you need to bring in somebody, almost like two ladies, like you're a one lady show here, it seems. But maybe you need another person, uh, maybe like a co host uh, some of the time. Okay. okay. Somebody to like a uh, good cop, bad cop. All right. Okay. All right. Like I was on, I did that years ago on our show, and uh, no, it's, 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 it's not finished. And and there was a there was this one woman, God, what a bitch she was. She hated everything I said, and so she said, "If you were so rich, uh, if you were so smart, why aren't you rich?" And I said, "How do you know I'm not?" And she said, "Oh, that's right." I said, "Yeah." I said, "You got a husband who's probably making a lot of money, and you're making a lot of money." I said, "I'm a one person." I said, "I own a townhouse in New York, so uh, I think I'm doing okay." You know, so she didn't know what to say. Yeah, I'll never forget that. But the other woman was really sweet. So we had good cop. Maybe you need something like good cop, bad cop. Not all the time, okay? Like maybe somebody to challenge me and somebody to be the nice guy. All right, give me back that one. I want to see that one for a minute. Okay, the reason why I said Pilates is uh, because you also are starting to develop a little bit of a back problem. I have a lower back yeah. problem. You, you need to do stretches, Which but you have to go to somebody who knows what the hell they're talking about okay. because it could get worse. You know, if you do it on your own, you know, so, I mean, there's all kinds of things you could do. A chiropractor probably could even tell you what to do, which would be very good. All right. So right now, as I said, career-wise, it's changing. Uh, and at the same time, you're trying to develop a relationship, a love relationship, at the, around the same time. So a lot's happening at this moment. Uh, I'm so single right now, it's not even funny, but okay. Uh, you got two things at the same time. Uh, you're really like two people. Uh, you're what we call Saturn, and you're also Apollo. Apollo is funny, friendly, outgoing Saturn. I want to be alone. I think I'd like to go back to school. I don't want to go back to school. I don't like school. So you, you have this conflict, you know. Uh, you're not born out of cusp, are you? What's your birthday? June 6th. June. Oh, that's Gemini. Yeah, you're two people. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Should I do this? Uh, you know, I mean, I could lay, we can lay it all out. I don't want to do any of that. And then you'll start it and you don't finish. The worst thing you can do is, like, for example, reading a book. Right. If you don't finish it, it's always going to be here. I should finish it. I should finish it. So it's almost like don't take classes unless you really make a commitment. You're, yeah, you're two people, Gemini. There you go. Um, do we have any questions for Frank? We do. Um, one person asked, this is John, who asked, um, have you ever encountered a a spirit that scared you? Yes, yes, I did, and uh, you, and it's it's an interesting story. What happened? Uh, I do have a house in the city, okay, and I'm always looking for people to help me work. So one summer, I got a young man from the south, and he was working for me, and um, uh, I gave him room and board to do carpentry, and he did. He went home to the South and he went to a church meeting that was born again Christian. And he was saying, oh, I'm getting all this help from this guy in New York. He's a psychic. Whoa! Now all of a sudden everybody in the church says, I'm doing the work of the devil. And they began praying for my demise. And how I found out was his mother called. And there was something evil lurking in the house. Okay? this. And I could feel it. In fact, I didn't even want to go in my home. I, I, I was afraid to actually enter. But when his mother called and said, oh, you're still alive. I said, what do you mean? And she started laughing. She said, oh, they're all down here praying that you die. The moment I heard that, it was all over. Because I was helping him. It happened once before with a guy who was a rapist who got out of uh, jail. And when he stood up on the altar and he said, I owe a lot of my help to this psychic, you thought that I was the devil incarnated, you know. And yes, there are, there is evil. And that was, I'm telling you, that was a very bad period of my life. It lasted several weeks, and I didn't even want to go in the house. It does happen. When you get enough people hating, you know, like right now, the whole country 
It's divided. There are people who are hating, 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 and there are people who are trying to, you know, try to correct this and try to go up. Oh, I've never seen anything like this in America. It's amazing. It's just a, what's going on right now. It's, it's, it's Speaking really, of America, and I wasn't going to bring up yeah. politics. Uh, I, Do you think never, anything's going to change or calm down a little bit? I mean, no, no. Uh, let's not get into okay, that. Okay, next that's, question. That's another story. <laughs> that's a whole other story. No, but uh, yes, the, but the thing that what I saw, which was so evil, was not necessarily a dead spirit, but this was things that people were praying and sending this evil thing. And it was in the house. I mean, you could people would come to see me and they say, you know, your house feels gray. It feels dark. Something wrong. You know, they felt it. Yeah. Thank you. You have another question? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just ask a quick question. Um, so, do you ever sense um, when you meet a person for the first time that you have met them in a past life or they're a being that is part of the fabric of maybe your ancestry or someone that is part of history? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes I might meet someone and I think to myself, God, I know this person, or they know me, actually. That does happen, and a lot of people tell me that. Uh, my friend who came with me here, you know, they also, everybody said she, she's my daughter. Everywhere we go, oh, you brought your daughter. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's something about us, and I do think that, uh, I don't know if you know the work of Edgar Casey, but he said that when you meet someone and you really connect and you never see again, that means you've worked out the problems from a past life. So, you know, maybe as I, as I, we, if I meet someone and I think I've known them before, we try to work out whatever the problems were, you know. But it's true, that does happen. And other people told me they've had that same feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have other questions. Anybody else has a question? No? Okay. Uh, so anyway, so Halloween is coming. Uh, I love Halloween. Now, what do you do? Anything special for Halloween? I mean, yeah. you are down in Soho, and I'm yeah, sure you get I a do, lot of crazy. Yeah, I do. And crazies. everybody wants to be with me, and I won't let them. <laughs> I'm always by myself on that night. Oh, you are. Well, because I want them to come. I want whoever to come. My my friends who passed away. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. You know, I've adopted uh, three refugees. They're the two guys. Their brothers and a sister. And, uh, they're married uh, with kids. One's got four kids. One's got two kids. The girl is mentally impaired a little, so she's uh, she lives in California, and they all want me. Oh, are we going to do a seance? Are we going to do a seance? You, you know, do seances. I what used are to, those right, like? I used to do seances. I don't do them anymore because what happened was it it took a lot out of me, and and I used to pick up the phone and it'd be like midnight, and I'd call up twenty people and I'd say. You better come tonight, and they would just, just whether they were in a house coat or pajamas, whatever. They would get in cabs, and and the longest that ever lasted was uh, uh, two days, 24, 24. We only stopped for water and bathroom, and that was it. And it was amazing. I don't do it anymore. It was so. It took so much out of me. It was one of. I don't talk about it. My sister wrote a book, and she mentions it, which really upset me because I. This was. Those people that came, it was for them and them alone. And uh, one of them, he, he broke the promise and he told her, and she wrote about it in a book. And I, I don't do it anymore. It, because to do a seance, you become a different person. You know, I mean, all right, okay. I was on a panel, there were four of us. An astrologer, a guru, um, a medium, and me. And they were all vegetarians. They all prayed. They all meditated. And then they got to me, and I said, my life is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And people were screaming, and they were laughing. I said, come on, kids, if the cow's dead, eat it, you know? But, you know, but the thing is, you want to live life. I want to live the life that I want to live. I, and when you become a medium, you're not the same anymore. It's just a whole other thing. And um, so I, I, I really don't really do it anymore. I just can't. It takes so much out of me. Frank, I adore you. I appreciate <laughs> you so much being here today. It's been so much fun. I learned a lot more, and I appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. This will also air on my YouTube channel. And Meeting Rare with Lisa, please go and subscribe. And I will also post it for the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, too. Thanks, you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.
Can you do the seances? Thanks, Vincent.